Have you ever looked up at the night sky and wondered, why? Why are we all here? What's out there? And how does it all work? Well, you're certainly not alone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the big why. I'm just as curious as you are about the universe and everything in it. From the depths of the ocean to the furthest reaches of space, no question is too big, no topic too strange for us. We'll crack open the mysteries of black holes, journey to the edge of the universe, and explore the mind-blowing discoveries that are changing our world. So if you're ready to unleash your inner scientist, ask the tough questions, and explore the universe alongside me, then buckle up, and let's ask why. Today, we're diving headfirst into one of the biggest questions humanity has ever pondered. Why is there something rather than nothing? This scientific question has baffled philosophers and scientists for millennia, and there isn't one definitive answer that everyone agrees on. But that doesn't mean we can't explore the fascinating possibilities. Throughout this video, we'll journey through different explanations, from the vastness of the multiverse to the mind-bending theories of physics. So buckle up and get ready to explore the reasons why. Before we dive in, let's acknowledge a funny quirk about this question. Some argue the very act of asking it implies an answer. After all, if there was truly nothing, there wouldn't be anyone around to ask the question. But that's a bit of a paradox, isn't it? We're looking for a deeper explanation, a reason why existence itself exists, not just a confirmation that we exist. So, what exactly are we asking? This question isn't about how our universe began, or if there's a god. It's more a fundamental question about why there is something, anything at all, rather than absolute nothingness. It's a question that delves into the very nature of reality and doesn't necessarily concern itself with the timing of existence. Some thinkers grapple with the question of existence by proposing an infinitely long chain of cause and effect, stretching back forever in time. Imagine a never-ending domino effect where every event is caused by something before it. In this view, if something can't come from nothing, then there must have always been something. It's a mind-bending idea because it suggests that there never truly was a beginning, just a constant casual chain. However, the concept of infinite regress can get tricky. It's difficult to grasp the idea of infinity. And this theory doesn't necessarily explain how or why this chain of existence came to be in the first place. But it does highlight the challenge of comprehending something as fundamental as existence. It pushes us to the very limits of our understanding. Arguments against attempting to answer the question. Some philosophers argue that the question of why is there something rather than nothing might be beyond our ability to answer. Here's a couple of reasons why. Philosopher Stephen Law compares this question to asking, what's north of the North Pole? We exist within space and time, so how can we truly grasp something that might be entirely outside of those boundaries? So the whole concept may just be beyond our experience. We're wired to think in terms of cause and effect. A billiard ball hits another billiard ball because of the first one's motion. But what if the concept of cause and effect doesn't apply to the origin of the universe? Maybe there wasn't a cause for the Big Bang, it just happened. This idea is called causation chaos. Some philosophers like Bertrand Russell suggest that the universe might just be a brute fact. It simply exists without any grand explanation. It's a challenging idea, but perhaps the existence of something is just a fundamental truth we have to accept. Now let's consider the perspective of philosopher Roy Sorensen. He argues that the question might have an impossible explanatory demand. Imagine trying to explain why a specific chair exists. You might say it was built by a carpenter using wood from a tree. But to truly answer why something exists, wouldn't we need some kind of starting point, some basic assumption about existence itself? Sorensen suggests that the question of why is there something rather than nothing lacks these existential premises, or trying to explain existence itself without any foundational ground to stand on. It's like trying to build a house without a foundation. It might be a wobbly explanation at best. This adds another layer of the challenge of this question. It highlights the difficulty of stepping outside of our own existence to truly understand why existence exists in the first place. Explanations and Answers Again, there isn't one definitive answer that everyone agrees on. However, there are many theories and explanations and we'll be tackling a few of them. At number one, we have the multiverse answer. 
Some theories propose the existence of a multiverse, a collection of many universes. In this view, our universe might be one of many, and the existence of something is simply a fact across the vastness of the multiverse. There are various multiverse theories, each proposing how these multiple universes might exist. Here's a breakdown of the four levels proposed by physicist Max Tegmark. At level one, we have our observable universe. This is the most basic level and encompasses everything we can directly observe or potentially observe in the future. It includes the entire expanse of space and time that light has had a chance to reach since the Big Bang. At level two, we have the multiverse of different physical constants. This level suggests the existence of multiple universes, each with slightly different fundamental physical constants. These constants, like the strength of gravity or the mass of an electron, would determine the basic laws of physics in each universe. This could lead to wildly different realities compared to our own. And at level three, we have the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. This level gets a bit more theoretical. Quantum mechanics suggests that particles can exist in multiple states simultaneously until observed. The many worlds interpretation proposes that every time a quantum possibility collapses, a new universe splits off containing the other possibilities. This results in a vast branching multiverse for every quantum event. At level four, we have the ultimate ensemble. The most mind-bending level suggests that all possible mathematical structures exist as an actual universe. It encompasses everything logically conceivable, including universes with entirely different sets of physical laws, mathematical principles, and possibly even entirely new forms of existence beyond our comprehension. And then we have the inflationary multiverse. This is a prominent theory suggesting our universe underwent a rapid expansion shortly after the Big Bang. Some versions propose internal inflation, where inflation continues forever in some regions, creating an endless spawning of new universes. The idea of a vast multiverse raises many questions. Does it affect our existence in any way? Can these universes interact? Is there a master set of physical laws across the multiverse, or do they differ? The current limitations of science make it difficult to test or verify the existence of a multiverse. And then there's the law of physics answer. This approach suggests that the laws of physics themselves might necessitate the existence of something. For instance, some physicists theorize that the universe might have properties that make its existence inevitable. The universe we experience operates according to a set of physical laws, like gravity, electromagnetism, and the laws of thermodynamics. These laws govern how everything works, from the tiniest particles to the grandest galaxies. Some physicists theorize these laws might be inherent or inevitable. The universe could possess fundamental properties that makes its existence a necessity rather than a random occurrence. Some physicists propose that the laws might allow for the existence of a vacuum with zero net energy but containing virtual particles with positive and negative energy that cancel each other out. This vacuum state could then be unstable, leading to the Big Bang and the universe's existence. The universe's existence might not be a random fluke but a consequence of the fundamental laws themselves. This is an ongoing area of research and speculation. We don't yet fully understand the origin or nature of the laws of physics. Next, we have the nothingness is unknowable answer. Some philosophers argue that the concept of nothingness itself is meaningless or unknowable. Because we exist and can conceive of something, true nothingness might be beyond our comprehension. We exist within the universe and can only conceive of things based on our experiences and limitations. True nothingness, a complete absence of everything, might be outside the realm of human comprehension. Imagine a fish trying to comprehend the concept of fire. Fire requires elements that don't exist under water, making it fundamentally alien to the fish's experience. Likewise, True nothingness might be outside the scope of what we can understand as existing beings. Even if we can't grasp nothingness, the fact that we exist and can contemplate these questions is a remarkable thing. Next, we have the no beginning answer. Certain scientific models propose that the universe might have always existed in some form, perhaps eternally cycling or existing as a quantum potential before the Big Bang. In this view, there was never nothing to begin with. Some scientific models challenge the traditional notion of a beginning. These models propose the universe might have always existed in some form. There could be silical models where the universe endlessly expands and contracts, or it might have existed as a quantum potential before transitioning into the Big Bang. Think of a silical model as the universe like a giant breath. 
constantly inhaling and exhaling, with each exhalation being a big bang and each inhalation a cosmic collapse. And as for the quantum potential explanation, think of particles that can exist in multiple states simultaneously. Some models propose the universe might have initially existed as a similar potential collapsing into a definite state with the Big Bang. Now the implication of the no beginning theory states there never truly was nothing. The universe has always been in some form, avoiding the question of why something arose from absolute nothingness. Though there is a lack of conclusive evidence for these models, they they offer intriguing possibilities but remain unproven theories. Next we have the theistic theory. Many religions believe in a god or creator deity who exists outside of our universe and is the source and cause of everything. This deity, by definition, wouldn't need an external cause for its own existence. Theistic explanations provide deep meaning and purpose for many people offering a sense of connection to something larger than themselves. Next we have the unstable nothingness theory, a restless vacuum. Building on the idea of nothingness being impossible, physicist Frank Wilsek proposes the unstable nothingness theory. Imagine a vacuum, a state of complete emptiness. Wilsek suggests this emptiness might be inherently unstable. Think of it like a restless vacuum, constantly teetering on the edge of existence. According to this theory, this instability could lead to the spontaneous creation of something, perhaps even the very fabric of space-time itself. It's a fascinating idea, but it suggests that even the absence of something might hold the seeds of existence. The universe might not have needed a grand cause or a spark. The potential for somethingness might have been built into the very nature of nothingness itself. Next, we have the quantum vacuum. Physicists like Stephen Hawking propose a fascinating explanation based on the strange world of quantum mechanics. It delves into the idea of a quantum vacuum, which might seem like nothingness at first glance. But according to quantum mechanics, this vacuum isn't truly empty. Instead, it's a seething sea of potential energy, filled with fleeting virtual particles constantly popping in and out of existence. Imagine it as a constantly fluctuating energy field, brimming with the potential for something more. Now, the concept of nothingness in this context is a bit different from absolute nothingness. It's not a complete absence of everything, but rather a state with zero net energy. However, Within the zero-point energy field, the theory suggests that virtual particles can borrow energy for a brief moment, allowing them to become real particles for a tiny fraction of a second. But how can something exist and not exist? In the quantum vacuum theory, the key point is that the seemingly empty vacuum isn't truly nothing. Science says it's a swirling sea of energy with the potential for particles to pop in and out of existence. Here's how to think about it. Imagine a pond. Normally a pond seems still and empty, but it's teeming with microscopic life, tiny organisms swimming around. The quantum vacuum is like that pond, full of potential, even though it might seem empty at first glance. Particles and antiparticles, science tells us that particles come in pairs, a particle and its antiparticle. In the quantum vacuum, these pairs can flicker in and out of existence for a very brief time, borrowing energy from the vacuum itself. It's almost like they're borrowing existence for a split second. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle tells us that it's impossible to know both the position and momentum of a particle with perfect accuracy. In the quantum vacuum, this means these fleeting particles can exist in a blurry, probabilistic state, not quite there, but not entirely nothing either. So to answer this question directly, in the quantum vacuum theory, something exists in the sense that there's a constant fluctuation of energy and the potential for particles to appear. However, these particles aren't stable real particles in the usual sense. They're more like fleeting possibilities, existing in a probabilistic state according to the uncertainty principle. But wait a minute, what does the uncertainty principle actually state? The quantum vacuum theory relies on a principle from quantum mechanics called the uncertainty principle. This principle formulated by Warner Heisenberg states that it's impossible to know both the position and momentum which is the speed and direction of a tiny particle with perfect accuracy at the same time. Imagine trying to measure the position of a ball with a flashlight. The act of shining the light on the ball disrupts its momentum. The more precisely you measure its position, the less you know about its momentum and vice versa. This fuzziness applies to the particles that pop in and out of existence in the quantum vacuum. These particles are so fleeting that their position and momentum are inherently uncertain. They exist in a probabilistic state, meaning there's a certain chance they'll be there, but not a definite location or speed. Why is this important? The uncertainty principle helps explain how particles can seemingly appear from nowhere in the quantum vacuum. The constant fluctuation of energy allows these particles to borrow existence for a tiny fraction of a second, existing in a blurry, uncertain state. 
So, the uncertainty principle doesn't say that something can exist and not exist at the same time. Instead, it tells us that for very small particles, our usual understanding of position and existence gets fuzzy. These particles can be there probabilistically, existing as a possibility rather than a definite solid object. Okay, that kind of makes sense, but what happens after these particles borrow energy? The uncertainty principle allows for these temporary energy fluctuations and the particles to have to return the borrowed energy when they disappear back into the vacuum. So, the particles aren't borrowing from a set amount of energy, but rather exploiting the temporary fluctuations allowed by the uncertainty principle. It's a complex concept, but it offers a possible explanation for how something, even for a fleeting moment, can arise from a seemingly empty space. Science acknowledges the limitations of this explanation. The concept of virtual particles borrowing from the vacuum is a simplified way to understand a complex phenomenon. It doesn't fully explain how or why these fluctuations occur, and there's still much we don't know about the quantum vacuum. The key takeaway here is that the quantum vacuum theory suggests that even in a state with minimal energy, the universe might hold the potential for the fleeting existence of particles. It's a mind-bending idea, but it offers a possible explanation for how something could arise from a seemingly empty space. Perhaps a random fluctuation in the quantum vacuum led to the creation of the first particles, eventually snowballing into the universe we know today. Next, we have the theory that we are the universe experiencing itself. So far, we've explored explanations for why something exists outside of ourselves. But what if the answer lies within? What if the universe itself is a product of consciousness and we are the reason there's something rather than nothing? Some theories propose that the universe itself might be a product of consciousness. Everything that exists, stars, galaxies, even the laws of physics, might be a part of a grand cosmic dream. And within this dream, consciousness arises, allowing the universe to experience itself for the first time. Time and space wouldn't exist outside of this experience. What you do is what the whole universe is doing at the place you call here and now. You are something that the whole universe is doing in the same way that a wave is something that the whole ocean is doing. The real you is not a puppet which life pushes around. The real deep down you is the whole universe. This quote by Alan Watts offers a fascinating perspective on our place in the universe. It challenges the way we think about ourselves as separate entities and highlights our deep connection to the cosmos. Our actions, thoughts, and experiences aren't isolated events. Watts suggests that they're manifestations of the universe itself unfolding at this specific point in time and space. Think of a wave on the ocean. The wave is a temporary form, but it's ultimately the ocean itself in motion. Likewise, Watts suggested that we are temporary expressions of the vast cosmic energy that is the universe. We often feel like puppets controlled by the external forces. Watts suggested that this limited perspective blinds us to the truth. The real you, the deepest part of your being, is not separate from the universe. It is the universe itself experiencing itself. This perspective offers a unique twist on the human experience. We would fill the vastness of space with our creations, from civilizations to art perhaps as a way to fill the perceived emptiness of time. And in turn, we spend our lives killing time through experience and exploration. The theory of the universe experiencing itself delves into the nature of consciousness and the potential role in existence. Imagine a state of consciousness existing outside of space and time, perhaps always present or maybe newly arising. This consciousness wouldn't spring into existence with full-blown self-awareness. Instead, it might develop like a seed slowly sprouting. Initially, it wouldn't understand its own existence, only experiencing the raw sensations of being. Think of it like a probabilistic state, a constant flux between maybe I am and maybe I am not. These fleeting moments of self-reference could be the first sparks of consciousness, gradually solidifying into a more coherent awareness. As this consciousness evolves, it might begin to differentiate between itself and the outside world, even if those concepts are initially fuzzy and undefined. It would start to build the building blocks of experience, processing information, and forming rudimentary perceptions. This gradual development of self-awareness within the universe itself is a mind-bending concept. Imagine the universe slowly learning about its own existence, building the foundation for what we might call space, time, and the physical laws that govern them. It's important to acknowledge the limitations of this theory. The concept of consciousness existing outside of space and time is difficult to grasp because of our own consciousness is so deeply tied to our physical experience. As this theory suggests, the consciousness that underlies the universe wouldn't be static. Imagine it as an ever-growing entity, constantly learning and evolving. 
the more it experiences, the more it expands its understanding of itself and the world around it. This raises a fascinating question. If this consciousness is infinite, could there even be limits? Time, space, and the laws of physics as we know them might not apply in this scenario. These concepts could be internal constructs created by the consciousness itself as it builds its own framework for experience. Perhaps this ever-expanding consciousness could exist in a state beyond our current comprehension. Imagine a world where the very nature of existence is fluid and ever-changing, shaped by the limitless potential of this all-encompassing awareness. The theory of the universe experiencing itself takes a bold step further. What if the mysterious dark matter and dark energy that permeate the cosmos are actually aspects of this ever-growing consciousness? Dark matter, this invisible substance that makes up a large portion of the universe, could be the scaffolding upon which the universe builds itself. Imagine it as the unconscious mind of the universe influencing its structure and evolution without necessarily being fully aware of itself. And dark energy, the force that seems to be accelerating the expansion of the universe, could represent the limitless potential of the consciousness. It's the ever-expanding force driving the universe to grow and evolve, just as our own consciousness strives to learn and experience more. This connection between consciousness, dark matter, and dark energy is a giant leap beyond what science can currently prove, but it's a fascinating hypothesis that pushes the boundaries of our understanding. Perhaps the very act of us observing the universe, of pondering these deep questions about existence, is part of this ever-growing consciousness coming into its own. Our own individual consciousness could be like tiny nodes within this vast cosmic mind contributing to its overall experience and growth. The theory of the universe experiencing itself doesn't directly contradict established scientific principles, but it does lie outside the realm of what science can currently explain. Science is still grappling with how consciousness arises in our own brains, let alone the idea of a universal consciousness. The theory suggests that space, time, and the laws of physics might be products of consciousness. This challenges our current understanding of the universe. We can't directly observe or measure an all-encompassing consciousness. It exists outside the realm of scientific tools and methods. So again, the theory doesn't necessarily contradict established principles, but it doesn't fit neatly within them either. Science relies on evidence and observation, and this theory goes beyond what we can currently observe or measure. So, we've explored some mind-blowing ideas about why there might be something rather than nothing. But before we leave you pondering the vastness of existence, let's end on a lighter note. And keep in mind that many a true word is spoken in jest. Philosopher Sidney Morgan Besser once offered a witty response to this question. If there were nothing, you'd still be complaining. Maybe even in the absence of everything, the human spirit of curiosity and, well, complaining, would somehow find a way to exist. Thank you everyone for watching. My name is The Big Why. Don't forget to drop a like, and if you're new to the Why Not family, a follow, and let me know in the comments below if there are any other mind-blowing or philosophical questions about the universe you'd like me to go over in a future video.